Shakuntala says that she is quitting politics to ensure AIA DMK's golden government in Tamil Nadu. She says, I'll pray to God and my sister Jailalita for AIA DMK's victory. Kamal Hassan launches campaign from MGR's constituency. DMK offers 18 seats. Congress wants 35. Talks hit a roadblock. Bharat Biotech's Covaxin is 81% effective. Effectiveness is based on early trial data. Health Minister says for convenience of citizens, one can get vaccinated at any time of the day. Tax rates on outspoken Anurag Kashyap, Tapsi Pannu, Government Minister says IT department is conducting searches based on information. Maharashtra Government Attack Centre over raids. Rahul Gandhi says emergency a mistake but different from what's happening today. BJP ministers hit back at Rahul over RSS remarks. Trinamool Congress won Selection Commission to remove uh, PM Modi's image on vaccine certificate. A massive fire has broken out at Orisha Tiger Reserve. Environment Minister calls for immediate action. Welcome, we start with news from Tamil Nadu, VK Sasikala, the expelled former chief of Tamil Nadu's ruling AIA DMK who was released from a Bengaluru jail in January and was widely expected to challenge for control of the party and the chief minister's post in next month's election has now said that she will stay away from politics and public life. In a letter, she said AIDMK Carter should uh, wisely struggle to prevent DMK from capturing power. She says, my thanks to all those who loved me. I never aspired for power, position or titles and we will always be grateful to Tamils. <laughs> Sudhir, for more on that story, Uma, what really led to her uh, getting away from politics and how uh, does this affect the prospects of AIA DMK in the coming polls? And, and you know, what about the opposition? Sasikala's decision certainly took Tamil Nadu by surprise, and not just Tamil Nadu, but even her nephew TTV Dinakaran seemed to be surprised by the announcement made by, made by Sasikala that she's going to stay away from politics. Very, very clearly, she has spelled out saying that she wants the AIA DMK rule to continue, and therefore she would, uh, she's going to stay away from politics and pray for AIA DMK to remain united, and she's also spelled out the DMK as the uh, uh, you know enemy, as uh, Jailalita would call it, and said that uh, to, in order to stop DMK from coming to power, the AIA DMK needs to stay united. This decision of Sasikala certainly is advantage AIA DMK uh, and uh, uh, certainly a setback to her nephew TTV Dinakaran, who had in fact hoped uh, that the AMMK would be able to garner uh, a sizable kind of votes and uh, political space in Tamil Nadu as one of the inheritors of legacy. And this comes at a time when in fact uh, the BJP was putting pressure on the AIA DMK to include uh, Sasikala and uh, say along with the AMMK so that the AIA DMK votes in Tamil Nadu are uh, not split and it has a better chance at victory. Uh, Sasikala's moves can be seen in two ways. One, the fact that uh, this comes at a time when the AIA DMK seems to be fighting with its uh, back against the wall in many senses, with the DMK uh, seem to be uh, enjoying popularity after two terms of uh, the AIA DMK government. And uh, the second uh, aspect of it would be that uh, Sasikala would like to wait and watch at this mm -hmm. stage. She does not want to have a part in a uh, in, a, in a in a party when uh, she cannot be in either a leadership role or would not be want to be part of uh, uh, you know uh, making a space making a political space right. for herself in such a way that it would in fact split uh, the AIA DMK vote and in fact uh, benefit the uh, DMK in that sense. 
Uh, right. K.S. Arjuni, who is, of course, the Congress chief, uh, says that it is also a setback to the BJP because uh, he's alleging that the BJP was hoping to use the particular uh, to create its own uh, political kind of uh, uh, space in uh, Tamil Nadu, or uh, rather uh, control in Tamil Nadu through Sisikala, uh, and he says that this is in, the, in fact a setback to the BJP. Right, a massive, massive surprise for the state of Tamil Nadu, as Uma Sudhir, my colleague, reports. We shall, of course, keep getting you more on that story. Meanwhile, Kamal Hassan has launched campaign from MGR's constituency. DMK has offered 18 seats, but Congress now wants 35. What has happened? Talks have hit a roadblock. Kamal Hassan starting his second round of campaign from Chennai. His first stop, Alandur constituency. Amid buzz, he could contest from here. The seat twice represented by the iconic M.G. Ramachandran five decades ago, who also founded the party in power, AADMK. <laughs> Today, Kamal Hassan also released his party's key promises for women and youth, including salary for housewives, assistance for single mothers, guaranteed jobs for youth, with creation of five lakh jobs, and free shelters for women in distress. No corruptions will be there. Definitely a straightforward government will be made. For homemakers, they, they are giving pension, like a kind of pension salary. But could Kamal Hassan's assembly election debut have a bearing on the main opposition alliance? Today, the DMK Congress talks on seat sharing hit a deadlock with the DMK adamant on offering only 18 seats, but the Congress demanding about twice that. I, I will refrain from uh, giving any guesswork. When it happens, we will tell you. There is speculation that Congress could shake hands with Kamal Hassan. Although in the 2019 Lok Sabha elections, Kamal Hassan's MNM had secured just around 4% votes, in urban pockets and cities, the party had crossed more than 10% votes. And that's why Kamal's fresh urban focus in his second round. This is the first election after the death of two icons, Jainalitha and Karunalati, and his party hopes they will be able to make a significant debut in the assembly. In Chennai with Suresh, Sam Daniel, Findy TV. Staying in South of India, Kerala CM has alleged that model code of conduct is being torpedoed. At instance of some union ministers, ED has been calling officials of Kerala Infrastructure Investment Fund Board uh, and they have been uh, called uh, subjected to in, uh, intemperant behavior apparently by the ED officials. The issue is, the issue is of masala bonds by KIIFB. Either, neither recent nor urgent in nature. Now, I'm joined by my colleague Sneha Merikoshi for more on that story. Sneha, good evening. Uh, why is uh, the Kerala CM calling officials of the KIIFB being repeatedly summoned by the ED a smear campaign? Uh, well, Rika, uh, the backdrop to this is the assembly elections. The voting is going to be held on 6th of April. Now, Chief Minister has written to the Chief Election Commissioner. This after the uh, Enforcement Directorate under the Union Ministry has gone ahead and filed a case against um, um, a, a critical uh, fund um, uh, investment board of Kerala government, that is the KIFB, for alleged violations of FEMA regulations. Now, the Chief Minister has written to the Election Commissioner alleging that all of this is part of a propaganda motivated by political reasons and it is a violation of the model code of conduct. On the other hand, the opposition in the state, whether it be the principal opposition led by the Congress or even the BJP who has one MLA in the state, they have alleged corruption um, against um, uh, the masala bonds which have been raised by, um, uh, by a KIFB 
um, uh, uh, internationally. Now, what the state government has said, this is transparent. There's nothing urgent or recent in the masala bonds that were raised in 2019, that were floated in 2019. And the fact that now these summons are being issued to senior officials is nothing but violation of the model code of conduct and that this comes soon after a uh, union minister, Nimala Sitaraman, made um, her speech criticizing Kifbi at one of the BJP rallies. So ahead of elections, this uh, snowballing into a major election issue between the ruling left as well as the opposition in the state. Thank you very much, uh, Sneha, for joining us uh, with that story. Moving on, filmmaker Anurag Kashyap and actor Tapsi Pannu, among the biggest critics of uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi's administration in Bollywood, are being questioned by income tax officials in Pune following raids on their properties all day over alleged tax evasion sources, told NDTV. Searches took place in 30 locations in Mumbai and Pune, including premises linked to a talent agency as well as the now defunct Phantom Films, which was uh, co-promoted by Anurag Kashyap, producers Vikas Behel and Madhu Mantena. Talent agencies Exceed Entertainment and Quan were also searched. Exceed has been managing actor Saif Ali Khan for several years. This apartment building in Mumbai's Andheri is home to filmmaker Anurag Kashyap, one of the places linked to Kashyap which the tax officials have been raiding since the morning. Raids also on this building in Goregaon, home to actress Tapsi Pannu, again on alleged charges of tax evasion. Just four weeks ago, in response to choreographed tweets by celebrities in support of the government, during the Greta Thunberg toolkit controversy, Tapsi had tweeted this, if one tweet rattles your unity, one joke rattles your faith, or one show rattles your religious belief, then it is you who has to work on strengthening your value system, not become propaganda teacher for others. Anurag has been even more vocal critique of the ruling regime. He hasn't tweeted himself for a while, but his timeline, full of retweets of tweets, critical of the establishment. For instance, in support of the farmers' protest. There were IT raids on Exceed Entertainment and Promoters, the company that manages actor Saif Ali Khan, who was recently in the controversial web series Stand Up, as well as actress Sonakshi Sinha, who is also very vocal. Quan Talent Management manages actor Deepika Padukone. And during such raids, the officers get to know how much celebs earn and who all are giving them business. The government claims this is not vendetta. <laughs> जिस जिसका भी बारे में इनकम टैक्स या जांच एजेंसिया को जानकारी मिलती है क्रेडिबल उसी का जांच एजेंसी जांच करती है और बाद में कोर्ट में मसला जाता है ऐसा थोड़ा ही है बट मिनिस्टर्स इन द सेना कांग्रेस एनसीपी गवर्नमेंट स्लैम द सेंटर फॉर द रेड्स उसका ये मामला हो गया है कि जो भी केंद्र सरकार के खिलाफ में अपनी भूमिका रखता है या जो भी वास्तव भूमिका व्यक्त करता है ऐसे व्यक्ति को बोलने से उसके ऊपर दबाव निर्माण करने के लिए ये आजकल माध्यम हो गया जो लोग सरकार के खिलाफ भूमिका लेते हैं सरकार की नीतियों के खिलाफ आवाज उठाते हैं कहीं ना कहीं उनके खिलाफ ईडी हो सीबीआई हो इनकम टैक्स हो इसका इस्तेमाल होता है एन डी टीवी हैज लर्न दैट अनुराग कश्यप और तापसी पन्नू आर नॉट प्रेजेंट इन दिटी बट दे आर बींग क्वेश्चन एट पुणे बाई दी आई टी डिपार्टमेंट वेदर दी सेलिब्रिटीज इवेडेड टैक्स और नॉट इज अ मैटर ऑफ इन्वेस्टिगेशन However, the timing does raise a question as to why these agencies go after celebrities who are outspoken and critical of the government. With Arvind Gunasekar in New Delhi and Rohit Khilani and Praveen Ji Rohit in Mumbai, this is Purva Chitnis for NDTV. Now, news on India's vaccination drive. More than 1.63 crore uh, COVID-19 vaccine doses have been administered. 6.92 lakh vaccine doses given till 7 p.m. today. Total general population vaccinated so far is 9.4 lakh. Total benef beneficiaries over 60 are 8.44 lakhs. Total beneficiaries between the age of 45 with uh, comorbidities are 1 lakh. Vaccinations at this site have wrapped up for the day, but soon vaccinations will take place 24-7. Today, the Union Health Minister, Dr. Harshwardhan, tweeted to say that the government has removed time constraints to increase the speed of vaccination. 
people will be able to get vaccinated 24-7 and at their convenience. Prime Minister Narendra Modi understands the value of both time and health of the citizens. After just two days of vaccinating the general public, Delhi has more than doubled the number of hospitals to speedily vaccinate as many people as quickly as possible. These will start in a couple of days. We started with 56 private hospitals on the first day and then now, you know, as per yesterday's this thing, they are going to be 134 hospitals total so that they can start, you know, providing the services as early as possible so that there are no hitches and glitches and so that smooth vaccination program can be carried out. Private hospitals have welcomed the move. At Fortis Healthcare, we welcome this change made by the government. We are doing currently at 11 centres, we have been doing 1,000 to 1,500 vaccinations a day. With effect from today, three more centres have been added. We are in touch with the state authorities and have offered to carry out the campaign at all 28 of our locations across the country. So far, 20,000 private hospitals across India have been part of the vaccination drive. The numbers are expected to go up with the new initiative. In Maharashtra, the Mumbai municipality has added 29 more private hospitals as vaccination sites, up from just three. Hospitals are willing for extra hours, but are yet to receive fresh directions from the government. Currently, vaccination sites in Maharashtra operate between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. We are following all the BMC guidelines and in case uh, they change, we'll follow them accordingly. For example, as you mentioned, about increase the timing and all. So as we get, we'll follow that. And uh, we, our target from day one was 100. We have already crossed that. Senior citizens like these are waiting across India for their turn. And the inclusion of more private hospitals in the vaccination drive will bring respite to many of them. With Surya Ganju in Mumbai and camera person Sushil Rati in New Delhi, this is Sukirti Duvedi for NDTV. Welcome back. Now, Rahul Gandhi has said emergency was a mistake, but different from what's happening today. However, the BJP ministers have hit back at Rahul over RSS remarks. That was a mistake. Absolutely, uh, that was a mistake. And there's a fundamental difference between what happened in the emergency, and it was wrong, and what is happening now. Uh, the RSS is doing something fundamentally different. Um, they're actually filling the institutions with their people. So look, even if we defeat the BJP in an election, we are not going to get rid of their people in the institutional structure. Emergency a galti thi. Deri se kyu na ho? Agar Rahul Gandhi usko mante hai, to achhi baat hai. Aisa koi humne kiya nahi. Shayad Rahul Gandhi ko us samay sahi emergency kya thi wo pata nahi tha. सुप्रीम कोर्ट में हेबियस कार्पस में उस समय अटॉर्नी जनरल निरेन डे को कोर्ट ने सवाल पूछा था कि इमरजेंसी है इसका मतलब ये भी है कि कोई पुलिस वाला अगर कोई व्यक्ति को गोली मार दे तो उसके परिवार को या उसको न्याय मांगने का अधिकार नहीं है तो उन्होंने कहा था मिलॉर्ड दुर्भाग्य से ये सच है कि उसको अधिकार नहीं है ये इमरजेंसी थी आज ऐसी कौन सी इमरजेंसी in other news, the Union Minister for Forests and Environment has asked for a report on the forest fires in Simlipal uh, Reserve of Odessa um, and they have say, and he has said that the situation is under control. However, the problem is far from over. Disturbing images from Simlipal Forest in Mayurbhanj district of Odisha, home to the tiger, Asiatic elephant, apart from other endangered wildlife species and flora and fauna. These forest fires have drawn the attention of wildlife conservationists. Simlipal has 21 rangers and sources say at least 8 have been affected. Union Minister for Forests and Environment Prakash Javdekar has asked officers to take immediate action and report to him. Chief Minister Naveen Patnaik tweeted saying he has reviewed the situation and asked officials to take preventive measures. He said, Simlipal is an invaluable treasure not just for the country but also the entire world and also added that the fire is under control and there is no loss of lives or any damage to big trees. Officials say temperatures are extremely high this year. 
Dry deciduous forests are on fire and are being attended to on priority. The worry is that this is just the beginning of summer and February to May is when the forest department is on high alert for forest fires. This year, officials say, is going to be challenging, as these pictures show. An NDTV Bureau report. With that, our wrap on this bulletin. Thank you very much for watching.